At the beginning of the movie, we see a woman giving birth to a child who is surrounded by some village women. A man then comes there and he asks them to hurry up. He takes her child with him, and the woman just helplessly keeps crying for her child. We then see some people sitting around the child and chanting something, and there are some jinns among them. An old woman then brings a boy from inside whose hands are bleeding. She drops his blood in a vessel, after which the cradle of the newborn baby starts shaking, and some unseen entity pulls it into the darkness. After this, a terrible sound starts echoing in the entire room, causing all the people present there to scream, and the scene gets cut. Cut to Dilek's house, where she wakes up hearing some sound. She tries to wake up her husband Omer saying she heard something downstairs, but he doesn't wake up. She comes out and hears some sound again, and notices that the sound is coming from a room. She goes to that room to investigate but finds nothing there, so she leaves there. The next day, Omer asks her if she didn't sleep well at night, to which she says she did, but she is having a headache. Omer then leaves for work, and Dilek notices that the TV turns on automatically. Now as she switches off the TV, she hears something breaking, and when she goes in, she finds that the milk bottle is broken. Later, while she is taking a nap, she again hears something breaking. She comes downstairs to check and gets shocked to see that the whole kitchen is messed up and finds some footprints on the floor. She then hears some noise again, and when she comes out to check, the door shuts on its own, and only then does her sister Seta come there and she tells her that someone is in the house. Seta calms her down and tells her that the door is not shut, and Dilek gets shocked to see this. Seta comes in and tells her that it's just a dog, to which Dilek asks her if does dog open the kitchen cabinet as well. Seta suggests her to get a security camera, to which she says she is right. Later, when Omer returns home, she tells him that someone broke into the house today, and if he doesn't get a security camera installed, she is going to leave. Later that night, while they are sleeping, a shadow appears in their house, and then the door of that room opens and shuts on its own. Dialog wakes up hearing the sound and comes downstairs to check, where she starts hearing the voice of that entity and all the noises that we heard at the beginning of the movie. She then goes to that room and finds something written in the mirror, and then someone passes behind her. Dilek goes to that side to check, where she sees someone sitting in the corner, and suddenly an entity attacks her. She wakes up feeling strange and anxious next to Omer and tells him she could not sleep. Omer asks her to come back to bed, but suddenly, she attacks him with a knife and kills him. After that, she goes to a room where there are strange beings called jinns gathered around a dead body. She had a flashback to a scene where that woman was giving birth to a child. In the room, she says, the jinn of Harith, and a jinn hammers a nail into the body's head. She then wakes up in her bed, and Omer tries to comfort her and notices her nose is bleeding. She gets up and runs to the room, but finds nothing in the mirror. Omer follows her, reassuring her it was just a bad dream. The next day, Omer installs the cameras in the house. Both of them are getting ready to go out somewhere and Omer goes out beforehand to start the car, and as Dilak is about to go out, she gets spooked to hear some noises, but she doesn't pay much attention to it. We then see them in a club with Seda and her husband Haran, and here we come to know that they have come there to celebrate Dilak's birthday. After this, they all go to Haran's house, where he tells Dilak that he searched about her dreams. He has asked someone about number 7730 and she will reply to him soon, and Harith is the original name of Satan, who is an ancestor of the Jinn. He then shows them a coral stone and tells them that it is also known as the Jinn Stone. According to ancient Egyptians and Babylonians, all types of disease come from the Jinn, and you can tell if someone's been possessed by using this stone. They then kill the light, and Haran asks her to place her palm on that stone, and then close her eyes. He asks her to imagine an eye on her palm and look at the stone through that eye. He then asks her to lift her hand from the stone and face her palm towards him, and after a while, everyone else disappears from there and she tells them that something is happening. After this, she sees the number 7730 written in front of her, and an eye appears in her hand. Suddenly Jin snatches that eye, due to which she gets terrified and begins screaming, and Jin tells her to prepare to die if she sets foot in here. Haran asks her to open her eyes, and as she does so, she returns back to her realm, and he asks her what she saw. They make a sketch of what she saw and Omer asks Haran what they are going to do now. Haran says he does know some stuff, but this is beyond him. Omer asks him why he is meddling with things that are beyond him, and all he did was to confuse everyone. Haran says he told someone about her dream and they gave him this coral stone and explained the ritual they just performed. Omer asks him who was it, to which he says she is a very well-informed woman named Balkis and she told him to call her after the ritual had been performed. He then calls her and tells her that they performed the ritual with the stone like she told him to do, and she saw an eye in her palm. Balkis tells him to bring her to her next Wednesday, 
Later that night, while Seta and Dialek are talking on a video call, suddenly something happens and the electricity in Dialek's house goes out and the call gets disconnected. Only then she senses someone's presence in her house, and when she goes there to check, an unseen entity drowns her into the darkness. Later, when Omer returns home, she tells him that first she heard breathing, and then she felt something was touching her neck and then it pushed her. Omer doesn't believe anything she says and tells her that maybe she should see someone. Dialek says she is going to see the woman Haran was talking about, to which he asks her does she study all these years just to get advice from a witch woman. Later that night, we see something crawling inside their blanket, and a scary hand touches her. But when she wakes up there is nothing there. The door of that closet then opens on its own, and when Dialek goes there to investigate, she finds the number 7730 written there, and her hand turns demonic as she touches it. She gets terrified and tries to leave, but suddenly the door of the closet opens again. She returns to the room and finds a box in that closet. In it, she finds some photos in which everyone's eyes were scratched. There's also a big photo in that box in which people with strange faces were sitting and the name of the village was the Three Shades. There is also a key in it, and as she picks it up, it flies away from her hand. She goes there and picks it up, and a djinn appears behind her, due to which she gets terrified and runs away, and tells Omer that there is a woman in the house. Omer tries to calm her down and goes to that room, but he doesn't see anyone there. He also checks the camera footage but doesn't see anything in it, and Dilak says that she wants to move out of the house. Omer says that if there is a djinn in this house then why can't he see it? But then the door of their room closes on its own which leaves him shocked, and then the lights of the house also go off. Omer grabs a flashlight and asks her to calm down, and leaves there saying someone broke into the house. Here Dialek senses someone's presence in the house and suddenly paranormal activities start happening there due to which she gets terrified and quietly leaves the room. She comes out and calls out to Omer, but then an unseen force drags her into that room. Omer returns hearing her scream and finds her in a possessed state with 7730 written there with blood. He goes to her and she starts screaming in fear, so he tries to calm her down, but she tells him that they are here. After this, when he brings her out of that room, his attention falls on a djinn standing below. Omer gets furious and he runs downstairs to confront that entity, but he sees that the entity looks very disgusting, and he thinks it is a statue that someone has placed in their house to scare them, and he sets out to find the person who placed it and after that Dilak also comes out. Now somehow the night passes and the next day they go to Belkis's house. Belkis asks her some questions, to which she tells her that she started feeling some weird things around her, especially at night and when she is alone. Belkis asks her to close her eyes and pick one of the items placed in front of her. She picks one of them, and when Belkis asks her why this one, she says she doesn't know. Belkis slaps her and asks her to answer the question, and Dilak gets possessed. She then asks the djinn why he is haunting her and who sent him. To which he says he will strangle her so hard that her tongue will hang out of her mouth, and those filthy eyes of hers will pop out of their sockets. The djinn then leaves there causing Belkis to fall back. After this, she comes to their house and performs a ritual, through which she reaches their bedroom. She then checks their pillow and finds a packet inside it, and they all get shocked to see that it contains black magic items and some amulets, out of which the number 7730 was written on the back of one of the amulets. Only then she feels a djinn's presence there and she tells it to go away. Following it, she reaches the same room and closes the door asking them to stay out. After this, she stands in front of that closet and asks djinn to show itself, and as the door opens, many djinns appear in the room, and they all enter the room hearing her screams. She asks them where is that closet from, to which Dialek tells her that it's an heirloom. Belkis tells her that she and this house are not haunted by just one djinn, and these djinns are furious, malevolent, and cursed, and it has something to do with her parents. Dialek asks her what were those things in her pillow, to which she tells her that it's the venom of the djinn. She then tells them that 3,000 years ago in Babylon, the demons and the djinns were so powerful that with their influence, almost all of humanity was at war with each other. Their lord took pity on humankind, showed mercy, and sent two angels Hara and Mara in human disguise from heaven to earth. They taught white magic to the humans, in order to cleanse the people who became Satan's slaves. There was only one condition, that they would never ever use the magic for malevolent purposes. But unfortunately, as always, the ungrateful humankind acted frantically with desire and arrogance. They sold the information they got from the angels to the demons. They tortured Hara and Mara terribly and hung them down in a pit by tying their ankles with ropes. Afterward, the jinns combined the white magic with their own teachings and created venomous black magic. 